In this video, I'm going to talk about iAnnotate PDF, which is an application that you're going to find on the iPad. And it is the primary tool I use to read all of the journal articles. I use it to read web pages. I use it to read any other text that's not found within an e-reader program like Kindle or Shag. Before I can get into iAnnotate PDF, I do want to make this comment. The reason why I use, I convert everything to PDF, whether it's a web page or, um, a, P or a, a journal article or a Word doc, is by standardizing on the format, I have found tools like iPDF to be able to annotate, meaning make notes on it, to be far more effective than if I tried it to create the same kind of note in a web page or on a journal article or uh, anything like that. So, um, so I standardized on PDF. That's the key message to keep my note system consistent across all of my um, types of reading materials. So this is my iPad. I'm going to tap in my folder. This is my university folder. You can see it's got a, a bunch of different things on it. I'm going to tap on the I annotate PDF. Now I'm going to, let's start by the library first. So um, this is my library. You can see here uh, I have it already connected. I have I annotate already connected to a Dropbox. So this is my Dropbox. This is my university folder. This is my class folder. This is my uh, weekly assignments folder. And then I'm going to go to week two. And in week two, I have an article. This is a uh, Goffman's um, article. This is his journal article on stigma. So there it is. It's chapter 10, selections on stigma. And then one of the things that's very interesting, right at the bottom, let me zoom in there for you, right at the bottom, it's page 131. Now, it is the first page of the PDF, but it is page 131 of the article. Now, why is this important? Um, because uh, the first thing I'm going to need to do if I want to cite, and in the way that uh, APA format, you have to cite the page that a quote comes from as well if there's a page, if there's a known page, right? Obviously, on a web page, there wouldn't be a known page, but on a journal article, there's a known page. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to, before I start reading, I need to set up two things. Um, make sure my notes have the right heading with the right author, and then to also understand what page I'm on. So in order to, um, to know what article I'm talking about for my notes section later and what the author is, I use highlighting. So on the right-hand side, uh, for, uh, fourth item down is the highlighter. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start. So I place my finger down and I have slid it across the, uh, from the bottom lower hand all the way to the upper left hand. You can do it vice versa either way. But the whole idea here is while highlighting here right now, what I've done is I've captured the title and the author. And I'm just going to hit a check marks. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to make a note for myself later that says this ar journal article started on page 131. So uh, down here is the notes tab, and it happens to be yellow, but if I tap on here, I can make it red. It doesn't really matter. I'll talk about um, color coding in a second when I talk about highlighting. But uh, I'm just going to make it red for the sake of this visual. And I'm going to tap right between where the article starts and the... Um, the title. So I'm going to tap right there and you can see it just popped up a little thing and I'm going to start um, starts on page 131 and then I'm just going to minimize that. And the reason why that's important is later when I pass these notes into my writing system, I now have a note that tells me that when I go, if I were to quote something on page one of the PDF, um, then it's really page 131. If I were to quote something on page two of the PDF, it would be 132, so forth and so on. Um, the other thing that I'll tell you here is sometimes journal articles have a cover sheet on them. And so when you're numbering your pages, make sure you take into account that cover sheet. So if this had a cover sheet and the second page was 131, then I would either say start on 130 or I would say um, 
second page is 131 or something. So you just got to write a note that's going to be important to you. Now, when it talk when you talk about um, highlighting, now we can get into reading the document. And so I'm just going to uh, zoom in here a little bit. And uh, let's say that I, I like this uh, sentence that says, um, the first sentence, Greeks who were originally strong on visual aids. Let's say I like that. I'm going to hit the highlighter. I'm going to keep it yellow. And I am just going to highlight that first sentence. And if I'm happy with that, then I'm going to click OK, and I'll be done. One of the things that I found, um, and so what this does, when I and I'll show you how to do this, you can copy and paste all of these notes out into a text document. Um, but one of the things that I like to do is copy, also understand where it came from structurally. And so you've got this header that says stigma and social identity. I will also highlight that header. So if you look at a lot of them, like this is preliminary concepts, I will make sure and I always highlight the headers um, so that when I export the data, I know where what subsection that came in of that thing. And so let's say, for example, that the next one is the signs are cut out, and I like that sentence, so I'm going to highlight that one as well. And then the next sentence, the third sentence says later on. And so in my notes, I want to make a distinction. Let's say these are I'm just going to use this as an example. What if I have a point and counterpoint? And so I want to make a distinction between what the point is or the counterpoint. Or oftentimes, if I am reading specifically journal articles for a paper, I will highlight uh, something in green that I think is absolutely amazing that I need to absolutely put in there. So I'm going to highlight the next sentence. Let's assume that I want to either it's a counterpoint, so I can make it orange uh, and then highlight it, right? Or it's a phenomenal sentence and I want to make it green, and I highlight it. And then I hit OK. Um, what I found out through the course of the semester is I didn't always, hi I, I highlighted most things in yellow. Every once in a while I'll highlight in orange, and then the really good stuff I'd highlight in green. Or, or the really negative stuff I'd highlight in red. I, wasn't, I didn't really always keep to that um, sort of color coding. What uh, I found, though, was what was more important what was less important was keeping to the to the, that green is good and red is bad, although that, that's pretty good um, strategy, just that it was different. If I had one in orange and the next one in yellow and the next one in orange, I knew that those were all sort of different. They were the same. They might have come from the same place, but they were different. And so by just having them different, and I'll show you when we export. Well, I'll, let me just do it right now. So let's say I've finished reading my document, and I want to take all my notes. Oh, um, let me add another note here. I want to add a note that says, um, so something about like this paragraph, para, paragraph, and then, um, you know, something important. So adding notes to this document, and you can move the note around to make sure, so is, it is really important uh, when you go to export, and I'll show that to you right now. And the reason why is, is that for me, with my particular impairment, I may have had a great idea reading it, but three weeks from now, or a month from now, or s two months from now, when I'm writing a report, I will have totally forgotten my great idea. So this allows me to add sort of metadata to what I'm reading and give it a little bit more context. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export this out. And uh, so what's beautiful and what absolutely makes this app worth it is, the fall, is this feature. So under, I slid out this little tab, this little sidebar. Under Actions, under More Actions, there is Note Summary. It's the third one down, the uh, second one down under More Actions. And this now creates a summary of the notes that I can email myself. So look at this. So the note title is right there under Subject. And then under, it gives me the name of the document. It then, I highlighted the first highlight in yellow says section, 10 sections from stigma and then the, the author's name. And then there's my note. It says a note and it's in red and it says starts on page 131. So I always know that, um, and then the first highlight is on page one, right? So I always know when I go to site later that this is page one equals 131. And so therefore when I go to reference it and cite it in my, in my, uh, writing, then I always know that it's 131. And then you can come down here and you can see that other note that I put in and that was really important. And you can see the distinctions. Here's my green highlighting, here's my red highlighting, here's, uh, here's yellow, green, and green. And so those tells me that even though they're the same paragraph or they're in the same place, that they're different concepts. So now I can just type in my email address and send. 
And so I will do that. And I'm just going to send it. And that will, I will then bring that into my writing program and my note and research program later. So, very important, when you are reading, you are really making notes so that later on when you write, you have all of the information collected in the right way uh, to be able to make your writing super easy.